The last vlog was about us coming back from England and uh, Woody's experiences in Agena, about a day trip we had in the Parthenon and we witnessed a live sea rescue. In this vlog it's all about leaving Agena and um, heading down through the Cyclades to Crete. shares as deep as the sea no matter how rough things may come to be you and me we're family sing home hey long for the ride home hey i'll stay by your side home hey you'll always be So our first stop was really just an easy motor down to Porus, which is one of the last ports that you can kind of leave from to get to Cyclades to make the route a bit shorter. We only got as far as Poros, but we're not going to go to the town quay because the kids will want to just jump off the boat. So we're going to go to Russian Bay, which is just over there. You have to watch out because there's a little island and a whole load of reef around it, but um, it's very sheltered in there. So that's where we're going to stay the night. We've got to get all the way to an island on the Cyclades, which is um, about 50 miles away. So we're leaving early, which is about half six, I think now. Anchor up. We knew there was going to be a good wind, it was in the right direction. It's a good probably 70 mile passage. Kids were kind of beginning to feel a little bit um, seasick at times, so we found the bow seat was really handy for that and they loved it. They spent a lot of time just up on the bow seat.
the Cyclades Islands called um, Serifos. Um, the Cyclades, otherwise known as Sickly Ladies, oh, my friend has told me, which kind of makes a bit of sense because that was quite a bumpy sail. But um, we're all, most of us are coping okay, maybe little one spinning a little bit ropey. But um, it's quite a barren island. We kind of look at the island and think, where is everyone? But it's quite attractive because of its barrenness, I think. So I kind of think when you look at an island like that, because you expect to see like loads of wildlife because it's so kind of separate, but apparently, I don't think there's much wildlife, but apparently there's quite a lot of grumpy people living on this island. <laughs> I always find when I've just set off, you know, and haven't sailed for a while, I also feel a little bit ropey. So, um, you know, I, I sort of tend to sleep a lot and just kind of keep going on the helm when I can um, until I get into the kind of sailing groove again. We've arrived in another island in the Cyclades, and this island is Fole Grandos, that's it, it's Fole Grandos, which doesn't sound very Greek, really, does it? It sounds quite Italian. But, um, you can check it up in the chart if you want to see where we are. But this is the last sign and we'll probably go across to Crete after this. So we're trying to get a bit closer um, and trying to get a good wind angle for our big crossing to Crete. But yeah, this is a very barren island like the other one. Um, there's some nice villas it looks like on land and a church. And we're going to anchor in a bay around there, which I think there's a beach. Mm. After Serifos, we went a bit further down to Foligrandos, which is actually quite beautiful. I mean, we didn't know what it was going to look like. It was nice. It was like kind of arriving on a kind of desert island. But I think today we we'll probably do a bit of schooling because tomorrow, on Monday, we won't be able to because we'll be doing a big crossing. So we're going to do a little bit of schooling today. This is Galifos, they're little kind of cliff shacks really, little villas, and it's, there's no electricity, it's all gas lamps. But that is the view that you wake up to. It's really nice. And um, there's a little sign with a phone number, which just in case you walk past, which is very unlikely, so take note of the number. It's a secret find. That would be so cool to stay here, wouldn't it? And look, they've got a lovely little cove down there. But this is definitely a way to get away from it all. Aquamarine water, and it's almost like a tiny little swimming pool code, isn't there? Boat. We swam to the beach um, with snorkels and flippers and now we're going to swim back from the beach to the boat. And these are my friends the sheep. Fluffy, sleepy. The other ones I'll make up and I'll play.
we got back to the boat and back into the whole solar shower thing again. Um, dinner aboard, which is, is always really nice when you're at anchor. Um, and knowing the next day we're going to do our big trip um, down to Crete, because again, it was just the weather window that we needed. So we could have explored the Cyclades a bit more, but we would have missed that good wind. in the middle of the night because it's going to take about 16 hours if we go a minimum of five knots which is what we're actually we're doing better than that we're probably doing over six knots so we get there a bit earlier which is good so it was really dark when we left it was darker than it is now even though you can't really see how dark it is but it's very dark now but it was even darker before yeah we've got our radar on because it's so dark, obviously we can't see any ships out there apart from the very brightly lit ones. Like over there, there's a passenger ferry and it's like a Christmas tree, so we can see that one. But anything else we can't see, we can get it on our um, plotter. We've got AIS here, which shows us where all the ships are going. Um, I suppose if they don't see us, we'll just shine this up at the sail. What else? Um, the kids are all asleep. We'll probably be having some crazy dreams tonight. But yeah, it feels good actually. Our uh, washing is still out from our fantastic swim yesterday, so hopefully we haven't lost any of that. That's life on the boat at the moment. It's quite exciting to be doing a night sail. We've got nice wind, so we're going nice angle to the wind, and um, it's it's quicker than motoring on this boat. Actually, this boat likes to sail, so do we. And a little trip like that, it's kind of um, a 12-hour trip, was a good time to get a watch system in place really and see how we could do it between the two of us. Today we should be in Crete. Everybody's still asleep. It's a beautiful sight. An incredible night sail. It's been perfect. Apart from a few cargo vessels crossing our path. Um, not many showing lights, but still got a few more to go. It's been a good passage. 7.58 knots most of the way. The prop gen's kept up with the, um, with the autopilot and the radar and charged the batteries as well. It's been a good night. Ready for my bed now. Knossos, 
near here? Um, so the port we were going to was Heraklion, which is nearest to the Palace of Knossos. It's quite a big industrial port. There's a marina, but it's not really um, set up for visiting yachts. So we're on the big town quay. Here we are at the palace at Knossos. It's just south of Iraklion where we've been. So we're going to do the palace today. Um, are we excited, kids? Yeah, yeah. It feels like we're doing this whistle stop tour of all the amazing places in Greece. It, if it would be a whistle stop, if it didn't take so long to get to these places, because it took us like a good how many hours? 12 hours or something. But anyway, we're here. So the mines talk and it eats. Um, the, the, um, one of the gods called Aphrodite. Aphrodite. What? No, but who um, killed the Minotaur? Theseus. Theseus killed the Minotaur so no more children could get eaten. And then you lived in there. Basically, then all the children were happy. So, Peter's dad was Poseidon. And who's Poseidon? He's um, the god of the sea. And that's my favourite god. Boom jumping. And if they survived, mm -hmm. they jump. Now, they were not forced to do it. They did it because they wanted it. And to show how brave. There wasn't actually a minotaur. It turned out that the people in the um, when they did the ball running, so the ball would charge towards them. They had to do a flip over it, and in quite a few occasions, um, they would die. They made up, that's what made up the story about a minotaur eating children because the children would be the ones doing the flips, like boys and girls. So it was like a minotaur eating children. Okay, so we're trying to work out how long it will take us tomorrow to get from Iraklion in Crete. Um, along the coast of Charnia to pick up someone who's going to crew with us. So I'm using the peg and the Lonely Planet book. <laughs> so I'm measuring 12 miles, it's not even nautical miles, but let's say 12 miles is about from there to there. And then that's about 24. 60, I reckon that peg is about 60 miles in the Lonely Planet book. So if I stick that on there, but the problem is we've got... Right, Rowan, can you just hold that together? Don't do this at home. <laughs> Don't do this. So I reckon it'll be about 55, 60 miles to Harnia tomorrow. Um, we also took a shot of our Lego Erica as well. Hi Erica! After the palace at Knossos, we uh, went to the museum. It, was, it wasn't brilliant for, for children, but as I say, there was kind of proper fres original frescoes there that were from that palace. This stuff is about 4,000 years old. Goddesses with their arms up. Well, the minute we walked into the museum, this lady walked up to us and she told us to be quiet. And then there was this like glass thing with jewelry in it. And and then this other lady came up to us and she told us that um, we weren't allowed to touch the glass. No, I wouldn't recommend this for kids because there's nothing really to do and it's all behind glass cabinets. 
and if you touch the glass you get told off. It is interesting though isn't it, some of it. What was the bits interesting? Nothing. Nothing. After that we, we went to um, another museum that had been recommended which is the Natural History Museum and it really was a really good museum for the children, they really liked that one. We're doing school. The guidebook said it was closing at eight and we um, kind of got thrown out after an hour so we could have easily spent another hour there. I mean I would highly recommend it. I love that place. It's a plasma ball and like you and it's got like all this electric things coming off um, and it's in like glass ball and you touch it and all the electric thing goes into your hand and it feels really weird and there's um, like those optical illusions and there's a mirror that can make half of somebody, half of you and it's awesome. And they have dead bugs. Oh, the half play was really sick. And you just got like, and you just apps and all that. So we got some street food. We got a, the, possibly the last yidos that the children would get before we left um, Greece. And I finally worked out how to say it really well now. This is the last yidos, the last yidos in Greece because we're heading up the coast of Crete and then we're gonna make our epic four day voyage across to Malta. And uh, most of us probably won't even eat, so uh, <laughs> let's fill our stomachs. Let's have a ceremony for the last day. This is a serious moment, guys. The <laughs> last day was in my, back to my life. Another five o'clock start, children are asleep and we're up and um, we're heading to Charnia which is on the west side of Crete. So it's quite flat calm, I expect we'll do plenty of homeschooling on the way. Yeah, we're going to pick up some crew in Charnia to help with the passage to um, Malta. We need to get across to, um, to head west to get to Tunisia because that's where we're heading to get some works done and it's quite a big trip, yeah, we've got to get to Malta and then across to Tunisia. Sometimes boredom makes the children do get involved more and, and do stuff they wouldn't normally do and you know what they, they're left to kind of try and make entertainment for themselves so in a way that's probably the time when the boys kind of really got into like the speed. We bought some really nice books about um, the myth of the Minotaur and Crete and Greek history and there was lots of kind of little worksheets they could do inside it so, um, so that kept them quite occupied. In light of the, the man of war situation that we had before and um, 
and just trying to improve lots of safety things on board, um, we got these tags which send an alert if someone goes overboard. We wanted to try them out, so um, we unpacked them and tried them with our phones. Um, so we're going to do a whole blog actually on um, safety aboard because we're always sort of dealing with different things like life, what life jacket to use, what buoyancy aid, and you know whether to use these sort of tags. So there's a whole kind of micro blog going to come out on that. This is Charnia, this is our last, or Hania as they say in um, Greek, oh. I think. This is the last stop in Greece, isn't it? Yeah. Our last, oh, is that disappointment? We had quite a pleasant surprise when we got to Charnia eventually, because, um, you know, Heraklion is quite industrial, but when we arrived there, it's, um, it's a really nice little place. Again, it's one of those places where you could easily spend longer there. Our middle son tried out his buskin again because he's been itching to get out on the dock and there was so many people going past. But um, we had too much competition because the restaurant over the way was doing their own music. Hopefully we'll find a good dock for him to do that again. I'm the roving fender. Anyone must feel a bit nervous on their first big trip with their children. Um, so. Last minute we kind of just got in touch with some um, people that we knew and see if anyone wanted to come. So we had um, an old friend, Craig, who came out. He's got quite a bit of sailing experience, so he came out and that was really good. And um, Lisa from Brighton Marine Yacht Club, she came out and she's never really done a passage like this before. But she was a brilliant person to have on board. It turns out she was also a teaching assistant, so she really got on well with our youngest. So um, yeah, they both turned up on the same flight and um, ready to leave the next day. It's really, really pretty, and it's definitely a party town, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, we could easily have spent another week here, but because the wind's right, we're going to head west. What have we got to watch out for? Uh, there's a couple of rocks, um, which are all marked on the chart. There's um, a couple of fishing boats over there, which keep moving around. And, uh, and there's always the possibility of pirates. And they're all the hidden rocks under the, under the water. Oh yeah. And there's an anchorage down here, an anchorage down here, so we're going to choose that one probably. Yeah. It's kind of in between the two bays, isn't it? Or do you want to go head in more where the anchor symbol is? No, on no, the left hand bay. Oh, you mean there? Yeah. No, that's 1.3, so... Because that's the two bays there, isn't it? One, two. Is that mm. right? Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking like just on the edge of that here somewhere. Yeah. We went right to the very end of Crete, um, a beautiful place called Gramvosa. And we probably wouldn't have even gone there if we hadn't got this amazing treasure map from our friend Steve. This is our treasure map. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a treasure map. That's the island. And we've got two sets of clues. This is probably the island. It look, it's got two little bays and we've got the latitude here as well. And it seems to fit in with the latitudes on the chart and the longitudes. And I remember vaguely that our pirate friend told us that it was Gramvosa. That one, I think. That one. Do you think we're going to find it? Yeah. Yeah. We followed um, the instructions to get to the right bay using the chart and using the course to steer and every, all the instruction we've been giving. So it was really good exercise for the children. So in the um, mountain, and that's the fort there. Let's have a look. Oh yeah. And, and these are the two bays here and that's the yeah. two bays there. Oh, is that a shipwreck? I think so. Okay. A shipwreck. And the shipwreck's up there. We found a place to anchor and then we swam ashore just to add to the excitement. It's 
so we've just anchored our boat out there behind me and we've all swam ashore we're going to get the map out now and start working our way through the clues bearing 280 degrees from the church you give me a compass oh there's a compass on my phone nine Bearing in mind the treasure's been buried maybe 20 years ago, um, so but some of the clues were still there, which was great. Is that a square the window? The vertical cliff will bear. I like how we now bear bear. Um, I like an old bear. 90 degrees. We couldn't find the treasure. I mean, everyone was obviously a little bit disappointed, but you know, the treasure will be there. It'll be there to be found by someone else another day. Do you think it's that wreck down there? Maybe. So in the next day we set off, we navigated our way through a very, um, tricky sort of area of rocks. We manoeuvre our way around the channel. Yeah. Craig on the bows looking out for rocks as well. Say goodbye to Crete. Greece. We're going to go to Malta. Malta is about um, 420 miles, I think. It's Anchorage, it's just shelter, but um, it's um, tricky getting that one. What are you excited about? Um, where? We've arrived in another island in the Cyclades and this island is Fote Galados, I think. Can you check that? Where are we? <laughs> We're in Knossos pa um, Palace in Crete. <laughs> We're in Knossos Planet in Crete! Knossos Palace in Crete! Yay! Okay, so thank you for everybody for watching these videos and thank you for sharing them. Thanks especially to the patrons for um, helping us to get the equipment to create these videos, to edit and then produce them and also to get ice creams for the children to keep them out of the way so we've got time to um, create these video vlogs. Thanks a lot. And if you want to do it, do it. Ride, oh, hey, I'll stay by your side.